Okay, I'm going to try to um, see if I can uh, string together uh, some thoughts to share with you. And I am uh, calling this the, um, the American Cultural Beer Belly. Um, you know, a lot of times we're uh, wondering just exactly what is going on with this country. Uh, uh, if, if you have a perspective that is basically informed by sort of, I guess, you know, left thoughts, uh, you would definitely, uh, you know, uh, uh, see the situation as being somewhat horrific. Um, you know, there's, there's writing on the wall uh, with regards to what's happening. Uh, there is no doubt about that. I mean, you have, you know, the, uh, Steve Bannon being, um, you know, arrested, uh, looking at the possibility of two years in jail. And, you know, all he's uh, saying is, you know, this is, uh, you know, he's just facing the, 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 the oppression of the government. So this is a, this is a political uh, deal and it's going to, you know, play out politically. It doesn't have anything to do with the truth uh, at all. Uh, it is simply uh, political games, political theater, that's uh, basically played at the uh, ground level uh, of the 1%. Um, you know, th there's a faction, basically, that uh, sort of moves the needle on this one. Uh, but, so what do I mean by the uh, cultural beer belly? Well, there, th this, is, this is a fact here that's just... The majority of Americans, in a way, now, again, you know, language is so difficult and it really, uh, trying to, you know, put the situation in a way that, that you can uh, really understand uh, what, what is happening, uh, what we're trying to do is just to be as objective as possible. That is the idea. Always, and to be as objective as possible, you have to try to remove yourself, you know, as much as possible, which is a, not an easy thing to do by any stretch of the imagination. We are all burdened with uh, the, uh, the mechanisms of the uh, acculturation that we, uh, we are sub, uh, subjected to uh, our, uh, for the entirety of our lives. Um, so anyway, the... The majority of Americans, I mean, are, this is a situation, is, is that they're financially secure. And the only thing, well, not the only thing, but a large part of the politics is going to move the needle, or the needle for politics is going to be moved by the attitudes of those that are in the position uh, to simply be casual observers of the reality that's unfolding for those of us that live on the uh, margins of the socioeconomic structure. Uh, you know, so uh, there, there are different realities uh, and there is a, uh, a big uh, beer belly culturally, if you will, uh, you know, of, of basically incredibly satisfied financially individuals. I mean, not incredibly satisfied, but satisfied enough. They feel that their comfort is being taken care of. They have their retirement plan in place. They have, they have their jobs, you know, giving them a semi-decent income, uh, you know, maybe uh, both working parents and stuff like that. They, they, they still struggle. Uh, you know, especially if they have children, the more children you know, you struggle, and if you know the the the, le uh, uh, the less of um you know uh, uh, if you have a high school job, uh, which uh, the majority of Americans do, you know uh, they have to hustle extra hard. You know the, the parents are working, uh, both of them are working, and then of course we're asking ourselves, oh, how do the children turn out so bad? Uh, you know, well, you know, the parents are not really um, focused on them very much. Uh, they're focused on, you know, making the money that's going to keep the roof over their heads. And uh, in, in many people's eyes, uh, that, that is really uh, just enough. So in essence, you know, what I'm saying here is that the majority doesn't give a shit. Uh, or the, the, the way they care is, is very nuanced. 
you know, so there are some people that live in the bulge, you know, that, that will lean one way or another. And that is really the, um, well, it's not, so, so, so that, that is the area where, where the differences are made. That is where the, 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 the medium is pushed. Now, I am in, uh, so, so we have that. Now, the other thing to consider is, you know, the, 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 the value system that the American culture has. And American culture uh, really um, romanticizes, idealizes, and supports individual effort, uh, as opposed to social effort. Uh, and so, obviously, you know, that's uh, part of the reason that we are experiencing the, uh, the, the debates here, uh, the cultural debate. You know, what's more important, the individual rights or, the, or society's rights? Uh, you know, uh, everybody at large. And, and, and so we have that, that conflict. And that conflict, again, is, is, is really uh, uh, fed, you know, by the uh, economic comfort level uh, that individuals have. So that the, uh, the lesser um, financial comfort that an individual has, then the more they're going to try to protect um, the rights, uh, you know, to help them uh, continue to receive the, just the general benefits of, you know, being an average person with, you know, not, uh, you know, a college education or, or anything like that. Um, so um, American culture, you know, I, I mean, really, it's, it's, it, it is, I don't know how people in, interpret this phrase, but I sort of refer to it as laissez-faire, laissez-faire capitalism. Uh, even or or even laissez-faire libertarianism, uh, in the sense that you know even the even the the laws that uh, we have in place actually uh, to sort of maintain uh, the system that protects uh, profits over people. Uh, that that is the American system. So, for example, right now, you know would. Lots of lives still being lost. I believe it's somewhere in the neighborhood of about 1,300 lives a day on average that are lost to COVID, which is significant. Uh, and that number is rising again. Um, you know, what's the conversation about? Inflation, money, profit. See, that is what moves the mind of the average American. Money. It's not values, you know, good and evil or anything like that. No, it's their personal comfort. If your personal comfort is a four bedroom house, uh, 2000 square feet with a swimming pool, and you can maintain that without, you know, I mean, you have the normal headaches of, you know, what most people have is what you consider normal headaches. And you're okay with that. So, you know, at that point in time, okay, you're comfortable. And the decisions that you're going to make are going to be decisions that you feel are going to preserve that level of comfort. We may very well be the most selfish nation in the, in the world. Very well, maybe, I, I don't know that for a fact or anything like that, but it certainly feels that way. You know, I mean, yeah, the, the, the amount that we spend on, on uh, military is uh, simply outrageous. I mean, com in comparison to uh, our, uh, what are considered our sort of a, you know, our, our, our threats, uh, you know, the, the Chinese are so inferior militarily. Uh, I mean, with regards to the budget, the amount spent. Now, you know, who knows? I mean, that's never... Uh, necessarily an indicator of who's going to win or who's going to lose. Um, you know, we know that. We've been able to see that in history. You know, we know the story of uh, David and Goliath. Uh, and, you know, we are Goliath right now. The United States, I should say, is, is Goliath right now. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little hesitant on the we part. Uh, I, although I was born here, uh, you know, wasn't raised entirely here. So my culture is not 100% American culture. Uh, and I'm okay with that. And 
I should be okay with that. Uh, so yeah, that's that's in a nutshell. You know, money drives the conversation. Money continues to drive the conversation. As the media, so let's let's take it a little step further here. You know, we know that the average American, you know, is more concerned about the comfort or watching TV. You know, they spend money, you know, on cable, on on, on cable and everything like that, and watch the news. Um, and we know that uh, the media, in many respects, uh, uh, tries to sensationalize itself in order to catch more eyes. So it's only natural that we're going to perceive this dichotomy where, you know, there's a media that supports left-wing views and a media that supports right-wing views because it's money that's driving the conversation. It's not the culture that's driving the conversation. It's money that drives the conversation and money that informs the, the, the political positions. Um, and those political positions are really more, uh, not they're not logical positions. They're actually um, rationalizations of the emotional uh, arguments that we have uh, when it comes to things like uh, you know, money, security, capitalism, democracy, and all that good stuff. You know, uh, this is the belly of the beast. And I still don't have a good feeling about this at all. Uh, and um, the, the fallout, the, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Again, 340 million people with the majority not giving a shit. The average not giving a shit. You know, that it could go one way or another. And that's what we see. That's, 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 that's where everything is going. That's why, you know, some people say, I can't believe those people. And those people say, we can't believe those people. It's because we're all dealing with our own different realities. And so actually uh, kind of coming down on off that thought, I saw a uh, clip of an interview of uh, Joe Rogan with Jewel, uh, the artist. And I, I don't uh, pay a lot of attention to, uh, I mean, podcasts I'll listen to again. As I, uh, my, my active time is greater than my passive time. And my passive time is in many ways used to inform uh, the activity uh, that I'm going to be engaging in. Uh, so uh, we have that. But uh, the thing that is really uh, that I uh, that, that came to mind in listening to this clip is something about the truth. You know, we're always wondering what is the objective truth? Well, you know, I mean, people are going to argue about this all the time. And then there's people that have their and, you know, their their the way they see things, the way they, they think about it. Uh, but it, it, in many respects, what has to happen is that, you know, there's some of us that can eventually get to the point of owning their personal truths. And that's really important because not all of us have that ability. And in fact, there are people that die without ever finding their personal truth. That's, that's sad, but it's true. And the reason that happens is very simple. And this is not like uh, some kind of devious plot or anything like that. Although, you know, there are certainly... Uh, uh, influences in, in, in certain uh, areas. Uh, but um, my personal truth, whatever it is, is going to have to deal with other people's personal truths. And so even though my personal truth for me is objectively true, you know, this is my subjective truth, um, it's not necessarily the case for anybody that's outside of me. You know, nobody. So at that point in time, I have to negotiate my truth with other people's truths. 
And then I have to remember that some don't have any truths. That they're simply sort of bouncing around like a, you know, uh, uh, like a pinball. Just being bounced from one place to another. And uh, what's bouncing them is their emotions. You know, they're, they're uh, reacting, they're reacting to a situation and bouncing off of it. And then they're hitting another situation and bouncing off. Of it. It's like a ping pong. It's like a pinball game for a lot of people. So again, you have your truth. You own your truth. Are you honest with yourself? And when your truth meets up with somebody else's truth, what happens? So, you know, we... we it, it, it's an incredibly interesting situation here that that uh, we are uh, thrown into. It, it really, it almost in the sense of that, that we have to choose. You know, who am I going to um, support? Am I going to uh, try to pursue and satisfy my individual needs, or am I going to use my energy to help a greater number of people be able to meet their needs. Because I know for a fact that there are many people that can't. I know for a fact that there are children that don't have enough food to eat. I am not the richest person in the world, no. I mean, I'm, I'm far from it. Um, far from it. Uh, and, uh, but that's just the way, you know, I, I, I'm okay with my truths. I'm comfortable in a sense. I mean, I do have a house and everything like that, but, you know, but I could lose it and I'm ready to lose it. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to lose it, uh, in the sense that, you know, I feel I need to have some kind of survival gear, uh, yeah, nothing extreme. I'm not going to build a shelter or anything like that, but I'm, I do want to be uh, mobile and uh, able to react to a situation. I, I feel it's incredibly volatile, incredibly volatile. Uh, you know, the the proliferation of, of, of weapons, it, it only makes sense, you know, that in a country that dedicates so much of its budget to military expenditures that, you know, the gun debate, is like one of the biggest debates, you know. Uh, this is a culture that uh, really is. It, it, it's a you know people want to pretend that it's a culture of, of life and positivity, but it isn't. It, it is a culture of exploitation. Don't give a fuck, uh, you know. And, and but it's a in a way it's unfair because it's really not defined. I mean, it, it is a mass. And it sort of, it's a blob that quivers and moves. We are a blob. You know, and what's the direction of this blob? It doesn't look good to me, personally. We'll see where that goes. The beer belly of the culture is that apathy, that complacency, that... Uh, acceptance of the consumption for consumption's sake argument. I'm not comfortable with that idea. Just fucking consume. Um, it doesn't make sense. It's not good. If you notice, you know, technology has been advancing exponentially. Uh, population growth has slowed just slightly. And that could just be uh, a, a slight uh, calm before the storm uh, it takes place. There are too many signs on the road from the past that inform me
that we, that we, you know, we are accelerating towards the end. Yeah, that's what happens. You know, where there's there there is an inertia uh, that uh, and and uh, I don't know, and, and we can't stop this inertia. We know. We know that the, the sort of the temperature of the earth is going to get warmer. You know, it's all a, a result of our levels of consumption and our levels of consumption. And especially uh, on, on a worldwide basis is mindless. It is just mindless uh, uh, creature comfort efforts. Obesity is a physical manifestation of of that mentality, you know, of, consum- of, of the glorification of consumption. Uh, you romanticize, you know, this, this is why is, is Trump uh, uh, looked at as a hero by some people, because some people do believe in the concept of, uh, of American c- capitalism, and that, uh, you know, they, they think that they won the lottery ticket by living in the United States, uh, even though their reality does not reflect that, uh, you know, but, but they're, as long as they feel they have the ability to make millions, it doesn't matter if they have the millions or not. And that's why, and, and they glorify an individual like Trump because at the end of the day, the only value that has any value is the, the, you know, is, is luxury, is getting more. Is being mean and 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 assertive, and and you know not giving a shit about other people, uh, and and just trying to get ahead, and and you know being okay with 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 abusing and and exploiting, you know as long as I succeed because that is the American ideal, success, at any cost, you know and even and and you know billionaires, you know. Uh, th- this is the reason uh, Jeffrey Epstein was able to get away with shit for so long. You know, it's, it's like the billionaires are not going to eat their own. You know, if the if the if the people that are on uh, different planes identify somebody like that, you know, what's going to happen is what happened to him. Uh, they will protect their shit. They will protect their shit. Yeah, is there racism? Yeah, there's racism and racism is driving the conversation at the top, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, if you try to follow the money, you'll end up finding a rich white family. And everything that sort of trails basically supports that rich white family because they're okay with it. I said, we made you rich. You are an example of us. And if you didn't exist, we wouldn't exist. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of like doing a little kind of free talking. I, you know, I, I don't have a script or anything like that. Uh, and I am just kind of talking about the things that come to mind more than anything. Uh, but if I guess, you know, I were to summarize, uh, what I've been talking about for the past, so oh, 20 some minutes or so plus, um, you know, is that the current situation is incredibly understandable, you know, based on some of the, uh, objective truths that we're able to observe, you know, all the confusion. Uh, with regards to Bannon and the rights and what they're doing and how they're trying to, um, you know, destroy democracy. I mean, it's all, it's, 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 it's real, but it's not driven uh, by any pure, uh, you know, ideological, uh, on, on any sound ideological ground. It's, 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 it's really just, again, it's just a rationalization of our emotions and rationalization is not emotions is not a sign of intelligence, I mean, or it's a sign of some kind of intelligence, but it's not greater intelligence, uh, being able to rationalize your emotions. You know, the greater uh, intelligence is going to be in actually uh, trying to understand your emotions and coming face to face with them and seeing how your emotions uh, help you uh, process um you know, or navigate the uh, the reality that you have to navigate. 
you know, the people that you have to deal with, the environment that you have to uh, perambulate in. So that's all I'm going to talk about right now. If you have any comments or anything like that, I mean, I, I would appreciate them. I mean, you know, but not comments like, oh, you know, yeah, that's it, 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 more of a uh, sort of like, oh, I, you know, I kind of thought that, but, you know, maybe this or that, you know, just kind of uh, for uh, conversation, uh, just to see, you know, if, uh, if we're uh, aligned in our thinking uh, or not. Uh, so, uh, you know, what am I going to do? You know, I have my personal truth. I've been able to face my demons. I've been able to, to basically expel them. I have shed all the toxic shit that burdened me for, you know, for most of my fucking life. Um, you know, and so I, I feel like, you know, I'm the person I was when I was 20 years old, but actually I'm improved uh, because it's informed. I have, a, you know, experience that informs the spirit of the person that existed when they were 20 years old. So um, I'm able to go back and be that person. And I'm very happy about that. I'm very pleased about it. I'm incredibly happy. Uh, but, you know, and this happiness is a, is sort of a, 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 it's my own personal truth because one of the things that I've had to do to be able to achieve it is really sacrifice pretty much everything that most people consider, you know, things that they, they tend to not want to live without, uh, you know, for example, TV. Now, I'm not saying I don't watch TV. It's very limited. Um, you know, at, at best, whew, I don't know, two, three hours a week, maybe? I don't know. I, I've been watching a few more movies, so the average, you know, has been bumping up because, um, you know, I am... And kind of getting more on a, I guess, a 50-50 basis with regards to, you know, active and passive. Um, maybe not. I, I just don't know. But I, I do know that I, I prefer to be more active. Uh, you know, I don't give a shit about alcohol. I, I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I've, I've been so close to alcohol poisoning in the past, it's not even funny. And I had to wonder, you know, why the fuck did I even do this to myself? It doesn't even taste good. So it's not like the, you know, like the, the, the alcoholic... Uh, where the level that I'm at, where it's alcoholic and says, you know, I know I can't drink because if I drink, you know, I'm fucking going to lose it. I'm not there. I just don't want it. You know, it's, it doesn't do anything for me. I mean, it's actually more damaging than, 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 you know, beneficial. If I want to get my head fucked up, I'll go straight to pot. It doesn't fatten you up. You know, you know I'm not going to put shit in my, uh, you know, my liver or the original, just look, and, and people are, you know, pot or herb or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But. It's more of a natural thing. It's not processed. There's not chemicals. Blah 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 blah. You know, so the the arguments that I hear on this is is like it's so insane. I'll probably talk about them some other day because I, I had a, I have a really good example of that. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's uh, so you know personal truths, uh, beer belly, um, kind of knowing where. Oh, uh, so no no alcohol, uh, no cigarettes or tobacco. Um, and, um, you know, uh, less processed food, less sodas, um, less TV, uh, no consumer holidays. I, I don't observe any consumer holidays, you know, 4th of July, uh, Christmas or anything like that. I don't give a shit about those days. I really don't. I, I don't see any need to follow tradition. In fact, I find these traditions to be at this point in time, incredibly counterproductive. I mean, look at, you know, all we want is comfort right now. You know, so all people are thinking about, uh, where am I going to celebrate the holidays? How many gifts am I going to buy? Consumer society, the brainwashing is the, the level of the effectiveness of the brainwashing the, of, or an, a, a culturation that basically supports the notion of mindless consumerism has been very effective. And people are very focused and very tethered to their ability to consume. And it doesn't matter if they consume shit or gold. It's just the consumption of part that satisfies a person. The, object, the monetization of love or the objectification of love. <laughs> uh.
uh, some people have their truths and they're doing okay. That's good. We'll see where it goes. Take it easy. Stay safe.